Hey everyone, so in today's video I'm going to be talking about a forgotten makeup favorite in my collection. I kind of want to start a series on my channel where I kind of revisit these products that I've loved for a really long time. This is one of those items. I have loved this product since ugh, 2016. It is certainly a kind of forgotten makeup favorite because I was using it constantly got distracted and then I really hadn't used it for years. I picked it back up on a whim and I have gone through almost an entire tube of this this summer. So for me, this is almost like a shop my stash kind of video, but more so focusing on items that I think more people need to talk about. And if you're new to my channel, hi, my name's Amanda. This is actually quite an affordable favorite. And if you don't know my stance on affordable makeup, I never recommend something solely because it is affordable. I just across the board recommend products that I absolutely love, whether they are high end or affordable. For me, it really doesn't matter. I'm looking for quality. I'd love to save money though. <laughs> Who wouldn't? So if that aligns with you, if you really enjoy that approach, I would love to have you back on my channel. So make sure to subscribe. But without further ado, I want to kind of give a little spotlight to this item that I have been using kind of constantly all summer. This is not a new item. It is the Misha Perfect Cover BB Cream. This was actually one of the first K-Beauty products that I ever tried. And also, if you're new to my channel, really, really enjoy K-Beauty. And this was one of the first items I ever tried from a K-Beauty brand. Misha is definitely like a touchstone Korean brand and I really trust them. I don't know if you guys are gonna be able to hear the ice cream truck. It's kind of loud. Anyway, I don't even know where I left off, but, but essentially this was the product that kind of started my love of all things K-Beauty, especially when BB creams and CC creams, when these products started to make their way into the market in America, I slowly became more interested in what these kind of like original formulas were all about. A beauty balm essentially is a product that can work to even out the skin tone, um, provide some SPF, but also, you know, have some skincare benefits. And that's kind of the original gist, you know what I mean, of BB creams, CC creams. I don't think we tend to think of them that way anymore, but I do still think that we see within the market brands focusing on skincare focused ingredients within formulas to try and sell them. This BB cream from Misha is a very inexpensive product. I think it's difficult to find it for over $15. Typically, I have bought it for 10 bucks before. I've bought it for around 12, and occasionally you can get it for like $6. So I will leave a few links down below if you are interested in it. So my shade is the shade 21. I have also used the shade 13 as well. 13 is a little bit more yellow, but I really like the shade 21 specifically because it is quite neutral. And I actually find that it kind of corrects the redness in my face. As of recent, I've just been noticing that my skin has been a little bit more red than usual. And I've just been really, really enjoying this shade. Even the swatches, it looks quite, almost gray, but on the skin, it does not have that look. And of course, I will give you guys demos as well to show you guys. It also does have SPF 42. Now, granted, I'm not relying on this for SPF, but that is in line with, you know, the BB cream thing is that they will add SPF to kind of give you just a touch extra uh, UV protection. But truly the main reason I love this product is the application and overall performance. Okay, that, that's two things, but let's talk about that. So first of all, it is a little bit more of a creamy formula. It's not going to run down your hand. It is definitely a BB cream texture. But what I find to be really wonderful about it is how smoothly it glides onto the skin. You can see within the demo that I will show you that I can take a sponge and kind of just like drag it onto the face, swipe it all over, and it kind of melts into the skin. The formula truly does want to perk up the skin and blend right in. And that is, I think like the best way I've 
kind of described this product before is that it really perks up the skin. The finish is slightly more on the dewy side, but I wouldn't call it a really, really dewy finish. I've been wearing this all this summer and it wears beautifully. We'll get to that in a second, but the finish is very beautifying. It really likes to build on itself as well. They call it a full coverage. I wouldn't go for a full coverage, but this is certainly a medium coverage, which I also really like because it's giving me a medium coverage while looking like really healthy, uh, blurred skin. This absolutely has a nice blur to it without it looking like a heavy duty, blurring foundation. You can really sheer it out to give you a little bit more of that light, no makeup makeup coverage, but in areas where I do have more redness, where I do have more pigmentation, I can take this and layer it on. So it just kind of makes it a very versatile item overall. I also just find that my skin likes it. It doesn't crackle up throughout the day. It doesn't dry out, but also it doesn't wear down. The coverage stays where you put it. And I have just been um, time and time again, really impressed by the way it wears. I actually have been doing some wedding makeup trials on my friend. Um, I was using some more heavy duty uh, long wear foundations and just on a whim, I decided to try this on her and just set the face with a bit of powder. I used the Kosas Cloud Set and did a little setting spray and I realized that I loved the way it looked even more than the last foundation that we had been trying out. I just think that it's one of those products that tends to look good on a variety of skin types because it has that really nice blur. I think that if you have enlarged pores, you're really going to like it. Again, textural issues, this does really well with textural issues. But if you have more oily skin, I do think with the right prep, you could get away with this. But just keep in mind, it's probably going to be, you know, a dewier look for you. This has 1.69 ounces of product. So it also is a lot of product. It comes in this little squeeze tube with a pump, which is great. So there's really not a lot I would change about this. It pretty much hits every single box except one very big box in my opinion. This is kind of the reason why I don't talk about this one a lot on my channel. This just does not have a great shade range. And honestly, I feel like we have been talking about this with K-Beauty products for a very long time. K-Beauty is notorious for not having a great shade selection within a lot of their BB creams, foundations, concealers, and even in a lot of their complexion products, the pigmentation leans sheer because that's just kind of the style of makeup. And in some instances, it really makes it unusable for some uh, skin tones. So I think that that's a really important caveat um, that I wanted to make sure that I mentioned in this video. If you are someone that feels like you don't have the right shade for you in this foundation, my next recommendation for you would be the It Cosmetics CC Cream. They actually have expanded that shade range recently, which I think is great. These two products are very similar. I would say kind of the main difference is that I find that the Misha Perfect Cover BB Cream, it's just not quite as emollient as the one from It Cosmetics. I find that my skin kind of receives it differently or it kind of sinks into the skin a little bit more readily than the It Cosmetics. But over the past month, you know, my makeup routine this summer has been, I think a little bit different than summers in the past. And really like makeup in general for me has been a little bit different this summer. It's been like a transitionary time for me. And I have been kind of reaching for items I know I can depend on. And when I pulled this back out, I wore it once and it immediately was incorporated right back into my routine as something that I could count on. And I think there really is something to be said about that. Um, I have, again, I've used almost this entire tube within the past like month and a half. And I just gotta tell you, I mean, you all know how much makeup I have. The fact that I'm going back and being consistently pleased with my makeup when I have this on, I think says a lot. So 
I've loved this product since 2016. I wanted to pull it back out and give it a shout out on my channel. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you would like to continue to see me do these videos, please let me know down below because I'm really interested in your thoughts. Do you like this kind of forgotten favorites or I don't know, like a very mini shop my stash kind of video? If you do, uh, let me know. I will also leave this down below for you guys. And thank you all so, so much for watching and I'll see you in my next one.